안녕하세요. 아깝습니다. 마스크입니다. 아, 저는 어, 표현은 잘 못해요. <웃음> 아, so my wife is going to be doing a lot of my uh, translation. 제가 오늘 일일 통역자로 어, 스탠바이드에 나왔습니다. 잘할 수 있을지는 모르겠지만 도움이 되도록 최선을 다하겠습니다. 감사합니다. My talk is going to be on a Westerner's view of Korean traditional archery. So the Sayang in the Guangzhou Mesa, Bong Hanguke, Jung Tong Jokin, Bao Sogi. So, with that, let me give a little introduction about myself so you know who I am uh, and where I come from regarding archery. <laughs> So, when I was seven years old, when I was seven years old, I went to a, a kid's summer camp. And that was the first time that I ever shot a bow. And then, my next birthday, my eighth birthday, my parents, they bought me a fiberglass bow and arrow set. 그 다음에 8살 때 저희 부모님께서 활과 화살을 선물로 사주셨습니다. Yeah, and actually the bow looked very much like the one in the photo here. 여기는 활과 비슷한 모양입니다. And it's something I, I still have even. 아직도 가지고 있습니다. So anyway, for many years I, I didn't touch a bow after that. I, I didn't have a lot of chance to practice archery. However, when my wife, son, and I came back to Korea about 30 some years ago, I wanted to have something that I could do together with my young son. So, around 1992, um, I bought some takedown bowls uh, for me and my son. And these were Western style bowls. But the problem being was that we had no place where we could shoot our bowls. 근데 활과 화살을 샀는데 연습할 장소가 마땅치 않았습니다. 찾을 수가 없었어요. And I, I was thinking, well, Korea, Korea is a country that is famous for its archery. Why is there no place I can practice? 예, 한국은 양궁으로 굉장히 유명한 나라인데 왜 활타가 없을까 궁금했어요. So anyway, I was at that time I was teaching at uh, Dongguk Daekyo in Gyeongju. 그 당시에는 동국대학교 교수에서 일을 하고 있었을 때였습니다. And I asked my assistant, I said, do you know of any place where I can practice archery? 그때 이제 저교 선생님한테 여기 활을 쏠수 있는 연습할 수 있는 장소가 있느냐고 여쭤봤어요. And he asked me, he asked, well, have you ever thought of Korean traditional archery? 그래서 그분이 한국 전통 활에 대해서 관심을 가져본 적이 있냐고 물었습니다. And I, I said, no, what is it? 어, 아, 그런 적은 없는데 그게 전통 꿈이 뭐냐고 물었어요. He said, well, there's a club that's about a five-minute drive from campus. Why don't we go visit? 네, 캠퍼스에서 한 5분 거리에 팔타가 꿈꾼장이 있는데 한번 가보자고 했습니다. So we went to visit this club, which was the Gyeongju Horinjong. 그래서 이 클럽이 경주에 호린정이라는 국궁장이 있는데 이제 거기에 갔었습니다. And so I went there to see what Korean traditional archery was all about. 그때 처음으로 한국의 전통적인 이때까지 양궁만 알았었는데 전통적인 국궁에 대해서 처음 배면하게 되었어요. So 1993 I joined 경주 호린정. 그래서 1993년에 경주 호린정이라는 국궁 클럽에 가입을 하게 되었어요. And then a few years later, my son joined me 
And so that, that's where I made my start in Korean traditional literature. Now, one thing I'm going to mention right here is that Korean traditional archery actually led me also in another direction. And what that was, I, I was thinking to myself and wondering, when was the last time that the bow and arrow were used militarily in Korea? 궁금증을 갖게 되는 게 한, 어, 조선에서 한국에서 활과 화살이 군대용으로 사용된 마지막 이벤트가 언제인지 알고 싶었어요. And I, I heard about this thing called the Shinmi Yangyo that happened in late Joseon Dynasty. I thought, well, maybe then. 조선 후기 때 있었던 신미 양요라는 작은 전쟁 그때가 아마 조선 시기 때 활과 화살을 그 군대의 무기로 쓴 마지막이 아닐까 하고 짐작을 했습니다. Now, I started researching, and one thing I found out is that the bow and arrow were not used in the Shinmyangyo. But it, I, I found the story of the Shinmyangyo very, very fascinating, so I started doing a lot more research on it. Um, about, well, about more than 25 years ago. And so during that time, I, I've written many journal articles and newspaper articles, etc., in, including even finally a book on Shinyang. 이제 신미 양에 대한 논문을 쓰고 자료를 찾고 신문 기사도 나오고 그리고 책까지도 이렇게 쓰게 되었다고 합니다. And and also one other thing was I I I helped the Munha Jecheng uh, recover uh, a national treasure which is called the Sujagi or the Jangungi. Um, back in 2007, it was taken by the Americans in the Shinyangyo back to the uh, U.S. Naval Academy Museum in 1871. 1871년도에 신미 양호의 미군 이 가서관 이 장군기를 수작이라고 하는데 미 해군 박물관에 이제 이때까지 보관돼 있던 걸 2007년도에 문화재청과 협력을 해서 이제 본인이 들여오게 되어서 그때 Yeah, it was the flag of uh, General Oh Jae Yeon. Oh Jae Yeon 장군기를 그때 고군 박물관에 전시를 하게 되어서 찾아온 문화재라고 이렇게. So, so anyway, I, I, have, I have two very big interests in my life, uh, Korean traditional archery and Shinyang. Okay, so now let's take a look at a brief history of, of archery in ancient to pre-modern. I'm going to show a couple of slides here. So here, you know, we have the typical haram that we would see, you know, from the Shilla dynasty. And, and then, then we, we go way north here, where we have the Suryakko uh, wall painting, you know, which, uh, for the Goguryo. Okay. So we, we might think of, uh, you know, maybe Gojumong, uh, in the north, down maybe Kim Yushin in the Haram in the south. And well, one, one thing I, I, I should mention here is that, you know, Korea has always been known for its archery, even to the present day. And in the ancient of times, you may have heard of the term the Dongi. And of course, you know, if you look at the character E, E is the combination of the Chinese character Gung and De. 
어, 그 동, 이 동쪽 이라는 한자를 보면은 큰 화를 쓰는 민족이라고 그렇게 표현해요. So, so Korea has always been seen very favorably when it when it comes to archery. 어, 그래서 한국의 항상 어, 활쏘기에 비해서는 아주 널리 알려진 민족이라고 합니다. And you know we we see this throughout Korea's history. For instance, you know um, the very beginning of the Joseon Dynasty with uh, Ejo Isonge. He was very legendarily re renowned as a great archer. 전선적으로 아주 유명한 조선 태조 이성계의 활과 화살입니다. And the bow was the most important personal weapon of the Korean military through most of Korea's history. 한국 전반적인 역사에서 활은 개인 군사용 무기로서 널리 알려졌습니다. And um, it probably Probably, though, the last time that it was especially important was during the Imjin Weiran. The bow and arrow were important right up until that time. But of course, during the Imjin Weiran, that was when uh, firearms, the, especially the Huayak Mugi, uh, the Jochong, the Hwasung Chong, when it was introduced to Korea from Japan. 임진왜란 전까지는 화를 쓴것 같은데 이제 임진왜란 때는 화성총이나 화약 무기가 어, 쓰였다고 합니다. So, so the bow and arrow, they, they, they remained Korea's, uh, they remained a military weapon in Korea, but their importance decreased after the 임진왜란. 어, 여전히 화약과 화살은 중요한 무기지만 그 후로는 점점 더 이제 But we still see a lot about uh, bows and arrows in in Korean culture. For instance, uh, like like with uh, for instance Kim Hong Do, very important painting that he made here. Because if if you look at this, you know you you have a, a teacher teaching a student. Um, you have the arrow maker. He's making sure that the arrows are straight. Um, you have somebody here who is he's. Uh, Stringing the bow and balancing it here. So, very important cultural picture of archery. 음, 전반적으로 이제 한국의 어, 활과 화살은 여러 문화적인 면에서 여전히 중요한 위치를 차지하고 있고, 단원 김홍도의 풍속화에서 보듯이 이제 화살을 어, 똑바로 하는 것, 그 다음에 해는 활을 그 다음에 이제 발 쏘는 걸 가르치는 거, 이세 가지를 보면은, 어, 그림에서도 알수 있습니다. And also another one very, very famous, you know, from Shin Yunbo, uh, who just like Kim Hongdo, you see a lot of, of everyday life in Korea at that time. And archery was a very big part of that, as we can see. 일상생활에서 이 그림을, 풍속화를 잘 설명해 주는 데에서도, 해원 Shin Yunbo의 그림에서도, 저기 양반이 활과 화살을 갖고 다니는 일상적인 생활에서 늘 쓰던 어, 그런 취미 생활입니다. And then later on um, was when Westerners started finding out about Korea and its archery. 어, 이제 나중에 서양인들이 어, 공술에 대해서 이제 그림을 그리고 설명한 부분입니다. So like in this case, this is this is from a French paper. And this was from 1866, was the time of the Pyongyang-yangyo. So this, this was one of, their, one of uh, the West's first views about Korea from this illustration of Korea and its archery. And then Korea, the bow and arrow in Korea remained a military weapon um, officially until uh, the Gaho Geha in 1894. And so um, at, at that time, the bow and arrow was no longer military, but this is when, you know, what we're talking about, the sunbi and such generally, this is especially when it became 
the realm of the scholars, the sun was during the, um, during the time of King Bojo and just after the Gabokeya. 이제 이때까지 활동할 수 있고 그 이제 이후로는 이제 민중들이 있을 수 있도록 민중들의 이제 취미 생활이 Yeah, that that well, one thing is that King Gojong, you know, after 1894, after that time, you know, he established as at uh, the the Hwanghakjeong up in Seoul, which is nearby the Gyeongbokgung. Gyeongbokgung 부근에 황학전이라고 있는데 킹 고정께서 민중들을 위해서 설립하신 정이라고 합니다. And from during the 20th century and from the beginning of the 20th century, uh, Korean archery was still popularly practiced. 20세기, 21세기 코리안 아치 공술이 굉장히 인기가 있었는데 so like th this is a, actually a good example. This was actually the first book that was written on Korean traditional archery was the Joseon and Gungsu. Joseon and Gungsu, 1929년대에 이러한 책도 쓰였다고 합니다. Now it's 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 no it's notable because 1929 was of course during the Japanese occupation of Korea. 1929년은 아직도 일제 치하에 있었던 시기입니다. And Korean archery from ancient times up to the present time today has been continuous with some time, you know, during World War II and during the Korean War, a little interruption. And now Westerners are starting to see a lot more about Korean archery in the 20th century. Now this this was a, this is a photograph on the right here. Um, actually it was, it was originally black and white, but I, I colorized it. 그때 실제로는 흑백 사진이지만 본인이 직접 칼로 색깔을 칠했다고 합니다. Yeah. And then this one here, this one was, um, it was uh, made into a little cardboard card that was put into cigarette packages. 음, 왼쪽은 어, 사양의 담배값에 그림으로 그려진 카드보드라고 합니다. So th this was traded like around Europe and such like that, so they got 음. to see about Korean archery. 유럽에서는 이제 저거를 서로 트레이딩 막 바꾸고 뭐 교환하고 그렇게 했다고 합니다. And this one here, uh, this was an illustration that was done uh, in 1901, and this was a, a Westerner's view of what Korean traditional archery looked like. 1901년도에 그 사양인이 이제 스케치를 했는데 이렇게 사양인의 눈에는 이제 이런 식으로 보였답니다. 그러니까 지, 저희가 보기에는 한국인들이 아닌 것 같은데 사인의 눈으로 본 드로잉 그림입니다. Actually, Western illustrators they 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 tended to put a little bit more Western look into the faces. 사인들은 이제 조선인들의 얼굴을 이런 식으로 그렸다고 합니다. 조선인들인데. And in the middle of the 20th century um, was probably one of the times when uh, Korean traditional archery was at one of its most popular times. Now, now this photo was probably taken, I, it doesn't really tell us when, probably around maybe in the 1930s or so, I'm guessing. Now, now of course, uh, th this, this place here, this is how it looks like today. And this is Naksan Jaryongjeong. Naksan Jaryongjeong, 이제 1930년대 모습 왼쪽이고 오른쪽이 현재의 모습입니다. You'll find many old photographs of archers at this spot. 이 장소에서 많은 옛날 사진들이 많이 찍혔다고 합니다. And, and even some lady archers. 여성 공사들 사진. And some other archers here. Um, very typical. Photographs 
Uh, now, these kind of photographs are ones that Westerners really started to see. 이런 사진을 이제 서양인들이 많이 봐왔다고 합니다. Now, one thing I want to mention is that back before the 1970s, before the 1960s, and so Korean traditional archery is what we might consider to be Korea's traditional golf. 1960년대, 70년대의 활석이는 아마도 한국의 전통적인 골프처럼. Yeah, because um, one thing is the equipment, the bows and the arrows were very expensive. 그리고 장비가 활과 화살의 장비가 매우 어, 비싼 종류에 속했다고 합니다. And so this this was not really a, a sport for everybody. 그래서 이 어, 활쏘기는 모든 사람의 스포츠는 아니고. 어, yeah, so so people who had time and money. 어, 시간과 돈이 있는 사람들의 스포츠였다고 합니다. Now this here is interesting because this is a magazine article from 1962, and this this was written about a club in the Daegu area. 1962년도 잡지 신인 대구 북궁장 방문 기사입니다. And this was when uh, there was this American. Uh, Army officer, his name was uh, Mylon E. Ellot. He was a, a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army. So in 1962, he 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 was looking around this. Uh, he was an archer also, and so he's looking around this club here in the Daegu area. Now, the, this next one, I, I went and I, I enlarged the photos because, of course, these are gentlemen from the Daegu area. Yeah, 대구에 있는, uh, now, of course, I, I don't know which club they were at. Now, before we go on any further, what, I, what I'd like to do is Probably Korean traditional archery is new to most of you. So I'd like to just give a very, very quick idea about what Korean traditional archery is about. Okay, so what do we have? We have um, a few things here. One, we have our archers who are who stand at the shooting line. And then there's a target that's 145 meters in the distance. And then each archer has five arrows. And then the target is two meters wide. 그리고 타겟 목표물은 2m 가로 세로 2.67 and then 2.67 meters high. 예, 네, 네, 목표물. And then also off to the side you would have your target judge with a flag. 그 타겟 옆에는 심판이 있습니다. 플래그 깃발을 들고 있는 심판. And so when the archer shoots one of his or her arrows at the target. If it hits the target, the, the target judge will wave it in a circle. Now, now in the olden days, in the olden days, it was done a little bit differently. You would have the target judge would take the, the flag, the target judge would Flag, would run up to the target, target and then, because he sees the arrow coming in, sometimes hit the target with the flag, and then when, when the arrow hit, hit the target, the, the, the judge said, Guan Jun Yo! And even off to the side, you know, now, nowadays when we try to be more safe about things, uh, still sometimes when we have some very traditional 
competitions going on. You can still hear someone say, Guan Junyo! Now, how you stand is very, very important. Now, this one comes out of our Jipgum Jaewonchi. So, Bi Jong Bi Pao. Okay, and so what this is talking about is how, how you are standing, you, you, you want to make sure that your feet don't make either the jung character or the power So, actually, there are different ways you can look at this. For instance, uh, for the for the jung, you might have somebody who goes like this. This is more of like a, a jung stance, we might say. This would be more of a pao stance. But what we're doing, if you look at this one here, you have your non-dominant leg, the one opposite your arm. You have this one pointed directly at the target. And then, this, then your other one is about shoulder width apart and at about a 45 degree. So this way, when you are drawing, you're drawing past your body like this. So, so anyway, very, very important thing is the Bijong. Uh, the All right, now the next one is, well, let's, let's take a look at the bows and arrows. And so I'm going to skip, skip the center for a second, and let's take a look at here. Now, first thing that we have is Gakum Jukshi. So the, the Korean hornbow and the Korean bamboo arrows. So the hornbow originally looks like this. Now, let me get my own. Okay. Now, this, this is an unstrung Gakum that I, I take around for just demonstrations. Um, and now, one thing I'll mention is people look at this sometimes who don't know archery. How do you shoot that? <laughs> well, what happens is, this, when, when it's being strung, it's pulled 180 degrees. And then it'll end up looking like that. Okay, so, it gets strung around like this. Um, and now, what you have is the Korean hornbow, which has the, the center, the core of the bow is made out of bamboo. The belly of the bow, this is horn. And then, now this one, this one, you, you can actually kind of see this here. This is the sinu, the himju. And then here, that's covered over with birch bark. Uh, and the mulberry here, um, the, the handle is oak. Yeah. Um, and, it's, and all of this is held together with fish air bladder glue. 모든 거는 이제 붙일 때는 미너 브레플 접착제로 사용했다고 합니다. Alright, now I, I have, I have two different things. These are called 전통. 전통이라고 불리는데. These are called Yuyeokjeon. This is a very traditional style of uh, Jukshi. Yeah, so it, it, the point is just, uh, it's probably hard to see there, but there's just very little, and this is not sharp or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, um, then, 
then you had a, another another type that um, they they would use the tanpi. Tanpi. To to make to make a point. Tanpi로 화산첩을 만들었습니다. Tanpi 청을. And then now nowadays nowadays it's just machined in a factory. 요즘에는 기계로 만든 겁니다. 공장에서 기계로 만든 것. Um, and these kind of arrows very expensive still actually. Um, so. 아직도. Yeah. yeah. So, so, gakung jukshi still very expensive nowadays. Yeah. 아직도 가꿍 가죽시는 비싼 편에 속한다고 합니다. Now, on the other hand. 그런데 이제. So if you look at the bottom here, this is the gerangun. 밑에 보이는 gerangun. And and also my other jantong. 다른 전통에는. Is the karbonchi. Okay, so we have like that. Um, and these are not expensive. Because you do have a, some relatively inexpensive equipment, nowadays Korean traditional archery is becoming very, very popular. 비교서 비싸지 않은 이런 장비로 한국의 활성기 국공이 점점 더 인기가 어, 많은 사람들이 대중적으로 많이 한다고 합니다. 인기가 This is very difficult to string and to use. 전통적인 스타일의 국공은 쓰기도 사용하기도 굉장히 어렵습니다. This is very easy. 카본 화살과 활은 사용하기도 쉽습니다. Okay, so there's that. Next um, is to look in the middle. We have two things we call the gakji. 중앙에는 각지가 있습니다. And the top one is the 암각지. 아, 위에 거는 암각지. And 숲각지. 아, 숲각지. So the female thumb rings and the male thumb rings. And actually, it's kind of because of their shape. 어, 모양 때문에 암수로 나뉘어져 있답니다. And I, I, I brought some examples here. Um, these are all ones that I have used. 각지를 가져왔는데 사용하는. So I have three different 암각지 here. Now, the one that I use even to this day is, it's, it's actually my favorite. This is, this is made out of uh, wood. This is, um, I actually forget the type of wood. I'm getting simple words. So, so, anyway, so this is my favorite, actually. And I, I'll show you how these are worn in a second. So, made out of wood. Here's one that's made out of Water buffalo horn. And here's one that's made out of a pool. And so these those are all three of those are amgachi. And then I also have one sukachi. And and they're act, using them is actually very different. Now, angakji is you 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 fit it in kind of like this. Thumb, uh, goes in your thumb there, and then, then you turn it 90 degrees. And you have this. Now, let me just. Now, I'm not I'm, I'm not going to put a real arrow on the string for safety reasons. But I will show you. Now. The way that this works is the string goes between the thumb and the ring. Now I'm, I'm not going to actually actually draw back on this, but I will show you. So that it, and then the arrow fits right above that. And then, and then you kind of curve your index finger around your thumb like this. And so, and then your, what happens is, you, you kind of twist, twist your, your hand a little bit. And then that, that holds the, that holds the arrow right on the string. I can, I can go upside down, it's not going to fall off. 아, 그러면 떨어지지 않는다고 합니다. And then, and then of course, you know, we get into our, our position. 어, 자세를 
So if my target was over there, well, like that white board, yeah. you know, I would be like this, and the arrow is here. And this, this is what we we're, we're doing a complete motion, which this is when we get to here we call that manja. Manja. So that's at our full draw position is manja. And then once once after maybe about three to five seconds. We just relax our hand and the arrow. 3, 5 seconds. And, and, and as I was saying, this up, as I was saying, you know, we have five arrows. And we do it in order, because there's a there's a line of archers here. So one shot, then that person has to be then our second arrow, third arrow, fourth arrow, and our fifth arrow. And then, if somebody hits the target five times in a row, that's called a molgi. And when, and when you make molgi, that's a very special time in the club. 몰기를 만든 사람은 굉장히 스페셜 특별 경우를 봤습니다. And we'll get to that. All right, let's take a look at my first club. My first club was called 경주 호림점. 호림점. 제가 등록한 것은 경주 호림점, 경주 황성공원 안에 있습니다. Now, now, of course, you know, when you start, now this is one thing I, I found kind of, you know, kind of amusing nowadays because, of course, whole tiger, rim, forest, and then the jung is the sajung, you know, the place where we're shooting. Right? And so th this this here is our sajung building. Yeah, it originally came from, from Anakji. And then one thing you're going to find in this is this sign here that says Jonggan. And, and you know what? It's a, actually a complete explanation about Jonggan can be very confusing. Yeah, because of course you know the Jung is, is kind of a you know straight up and down, you know, and then Gan being a space. But but I think just very simply put, um, and not not all clubs have a jungan, I must say. Basically, this basically this took the place of um, main archery people like the Sadu, the, the head of the club, who would generally be sitting here. So uh, members, so when they come in, they would bow, you know, traditionally you would bow to your sadhu. So anyway, and different different regions, it has a somewhat different meaning. So we won't go into that further. Now, this is a little bit about my own history. And now, I joined at the very beginning of 1993. And in, in about 40 days, um, I, 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 I was able to get my first molgi. And which was on you know, March 25th, 1993. And, and the, the club gave me a very, very big celebratory um, festival. Yeah, so the molgi jachi, as, as you may know. 
<laughs> and then my name uh, with my Chinese yeah, characters yeah. are right here. Uh, so number 53, I was I was the Jokjang. Jokjang is what we call somebody who attains their mogi. So I, I was, I'm very, I was very honored, you know, uh, to, 굉장히, my, uh, my name is still there, so that's I'm very honored. And, you know, since that time, there have probably been three or four times as many people, so there's uh -huh. probably around, there's probably around 200 people now. But some different things, for instance, I, I gave uh, demonstrations at the Eastern Traditional Archery Rendezvous in Pennsylvania. Yeah, and uh, also I, I, I even posed at Horimjang for when they had their Shila uh, I would uh, pose for. And uh, also I demonstrated the use of the Tonga Pyeongjang, which you know, was a, a very special uh, you know, Korea used to consider that their secret weapon. So, just a few pictures of me there. Now, Korean traditional archery is very traditional. It really is. And, it, and the uh, philosophy and such behind it is very important to an archery. So we have what, and, and by the way, you can find these listed in, in your uh, bulletin that you have there. But I'll just, go, I'll just go down through these things because these are important to us. So number one, be seen as a model of love and virtue in a duck pain. Act with humility and honesty, sung shil kyam song. Solidly protect your integrity through discreet behavior. Jajung Jojo. Be courteous. Ye Yongsu. When in a position of power, act with integrity and bravery. Yongjik Waga. Don't speak while there is shooting. Supsa Muan. Have a straight mind and a straight body. Jongshin Jonggi. Don't resent someone who wins. Bulwan Sungja. And don't touch another person's bow. Makman Pagu, very important there. <laughs> and but you know there but there are actually a couple of very important ones of these nine. Um, yeah, number six is important. Subsa muan. Subsa muan. Because if when somebody is shooting, if somebody is talking around you, you can't concentrate. And believe me, believe me, if somebody is talking while they're shooting, somebody is going to be very angry with them. And Jungshin Jungi. So, straight mind. And so those two are very important, but also Makman Tagung is important. You should ne never touch somebody's bow or arrows unless you have permission. Um, we also have the Seisok Oge. These were the five Alright, let's let's continue on. Um, we have the book here, which is the Hanguke Bundo book, uh, which was published back in the 1980s originally. And I wanted, what I wanted to really show about this is now Westerners who are starting to uh, become involved in Korean traditional archery. So inside this book, there was a section about archery in Mongolia. And this fellow here, his name is Carl Zeilinger. And uh, 
sadly, Carl died a few years ago. 몇년 전에 돌아가셨습니다. 동일인이십니다. But Carl was very, very involved with Korean traditional archery. 이분이 굉장히 한국의 활 속이 국공에 대해서 아주 많은 관심을 갖고 있습니다. He was originally from Germany. 독일에서 오신 분인데. But he visited Korea very often. 한국을 자주 방문하셨다고 합니다. And he was a member of Hwangakjeong. 황학정 회원이시고요. So this is when I was I was shooting with him one time. 포링정에서 칼과 함께 찍은 사진입니다. And then this is Carl with the Boyer Bakukwan in Gyeongju. 칼을 만드시는 분 박극한 공장이신 분과 사진을 찍었습니다. So anyway, this was you know one of the people who was involved before I was. 본인이 이제 한국의 활에 대해서 되기 전에 이분이 이미 활에 대해서 신체에 있었다고 합니다. Back in 1995, I produced two videos. 1995년도에 두 개의 비디오를 제작했는데. So I did one on the Korean hornbow. 하나는 혼보 각공에 대해서 제작을 했고. And I produced another one on the Korean bamboo arrow. 하나는 즉시에 대해서 제작을 했습니다. And these these videos I made, they made their way all around the world. 이 이게 전부 전 세계에 다 소개되었다고 합니다. And so people around the world who like to make bows and arrows were very interested. 음, 전 세계에서 활과 화살을 만드시는 분들이 굉장히 관심 있게 이거를 이두 비디오를 많이 구입을 하고 그리고 많이 봤다고 합니다. 참고를 했다고 합니다. Now let me show you a little bit. Now you already saw just previously about Bakukwan, but this is a little bit more about him. 박덕한 공장님에 대해서 찍은 겁니다. Heating up the bow and such at this point. 어, 화를 히팅 열열 처리하는. Here he is with his wife in in his shop. 아내와 같이 찍은 사진. Now this one is kind of interesting because this this bow is called a yegum. 예고는 진짜 써놓은 게 아니고 그냥 식을 할때 쓰는. Yeah, you you can you can act up at the Yuksa in the Yuksa the museum the Korean Army Museum at the Yuksa you can you can see a the original Yegum. Yuksa 가면 원래 예군 원본이라고 합니다. But anyway, Park Kwan he he went about making one. 네, 그걸 본뜻서 이제 박 공장님께서 예군을 만드셨다고 합니다. And he's also made other types of bows too. 예군. Yeah, yeah. 의례 용으로 쓰는. But anyway, sadly about uh, Bakukwan is that uh, tw 20 years ago, he had, uh, I don't know, I forget the name in Korean, but brain aneurysm. Uh, so, so now he's, he's partially paralyzed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so sadly, he had to give up bow making 20 years ago. 그래서 발 만드시는 일을 지금 중지하셨다고 합니다. Okay, and then the other person, another person very important was his name is Che Gum Dong. Che Gum Dong이란 군 시장 화살을 만드시는 분입니다. 전통 화살. And so my my video on making the the Korean bamboo arrow was was with him in it. 네, 어 대나무 화살 만드는 비디오를 찍을 때 이분이 연출하셨습니다. And he's still busy making arrows today. 지금도 만들고 계십니다. 경주에서. Um, now let, let's take a look at something else, a little more international. Now this is on my family's property back in Michigan in the United States. 아, 여기는 이제 미시건 미국의 미시건 집에 있는 마당입니다. This was back in 2001. 2001년도에. And my son and I we built a Korean target. 본인이 저렇게 타겟 목표물을 만들어 놓고 대호정이라고 이름을 붙였습니다. Yeah, and you can see this is 145 meters away. 145 미터. Surrounded by the forest. 어 나무들로 돌싸여 있는. And then the the my you know this is 21 years ago. 21년 전에 찍은. So my son dressed up for the part. 저희 아들이 어 전통 복장을 하고. Even including a junggan. 전간도 거기다가 세웠습니다. So a little bit of demonstration there about uh, drawing the bow and shooting. So yeah, and so I call mine the Dehojong. Because Michigan is the five Great Lakes. 
왜냐하면 이 주변에 있는 미시건 호수가 있습니다. 근데 어뢰호 중에 하나인데 그래서 본인의 저, 저 이름은 호는 청호 블루 레이크로 누가 지어졌고 여기를 대호정이라고 지었습니다. And by the way, my, my, son, my son's muho is, is uh, 청천. <웃음> 아들은 청천으로 지었습니다. 우리 아들이 아들을 낳으면 청해라고 호를 아마 지을지도 모르겠습니다. But anyway, a little bit about my son. Um, he, he's, he has been doing Korean traditional archery for also since probably around 1993. 1993년 이래로 저희 아들도 어, 한국의 어, 국공에 심취해 있었습니다. So here he's about 12 years old in 1999. Yeah, this was at Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, in 2001, he got his chodan. 2001년도에 chodan 일단을 땄습니다. 공도에는 일단에서 구단까지 있죠. 일단을 땄는데 아버지는 아직까지 못 땄습니다. Also, he he also did a lot of modeling for our for our club. 코림정 네, 모델로 쓰는 어, 장면입니다. And also just regular shooting at around the same time. 네. Um, 2006 shooting. And then 네. this was just last 아, year. 이게 작년에 어, 지금. And I mean now, now he's 35 years old. So you know we, we, he's, he's been doing this for a long time. 네. He, he's, he's better than I am. Believe me. 아. And then also we have a lot of father and son shooting. So it's one thing that he and I always enjoy doing together. So 2001 at Horemjong, also 2001 at Horemjong, uh, 2002 at Horemjong, this was at a competition. Now these two down at the bottom, 2006, you'll see it's nighttime, 2007, nighttime. These were what we called our New Year's arrows. 이거는 이제 두 사람이 하는 해마다 12월 23일 I'm, I'm sorry, 12월 31일 마지막 날과 그 다음 새로운 새해 어, 마지막 순간에 하는 세레머니 의식입니다. 두 사람이 하는 의식인데. So about two seconds before midnight, December 31st. We shoot an arrow into the air. 12월 31일 And then it lands a couple seconds later in the next year. 어, 후에 새해에 딱 떨어진답니다. 그래서 서로 해를 연결하는 그런 세레모니. So it's been kind of our, our little tradition over the years. 아, 그래서 서로 두 사람만의 전통을 이렇게 만들었다고 합니다. <웃음> um, Korean bows have been in the movies. Did you ever see the movie Alexander? 한국의 활이 어, 영화에도 많이 영화에도 나왔었는데. Well, the bows that they used were Korean bows, actually. 네, 2005년도에 Alexander라는 영화에서 쓰여졌습니다. I know they were because I I got 195 of them for the Oliver Stone's production company. 이 컴퍼니에 본인이 직접 195개의 활을 a couple years later, they were in another movie called The Last Legion. 2년 후에 마지막 군단이라는 영화에서도 한국의 활이 쓰여졌습니다. So if you ever watch those movies, Korean bows. 예, 이 영화를 보시면 아 저건 한국에서 만든 활이다라고 아시면 되겠습니다. Uh, and I'm going to kind of flip through these a little quick to just save time, but. Back in two, from 2007, we, we started what was known the World Traditional Archery Festival. 2007년도에 세계 민족궁 전통궁 대축전을 이제 본인이 다른 여러분들과 여러 사람들과 함께 이제 시작하게 되었습니다. People came from all over the world, uh, both to, to show each other their traditional archery. 어, 세계 전 나, 여러 나라에서 온 사람들이 자기 나라의 전통 궁을 소개하고 서로 배워가는 그런 장입니다. And also to learn about other people's art. 음, 다른 나라의 다른 사람의 어, 할 국, 궁에 대해서도 알게 되는 계기가 되었습니다. And there are people, you know, you had Mongolia, uh, Hungary, uh, Bhutan. 몽고, 헝그리, 북한. Uh, and actually from all of, well, Korea, of course. 음. Um, you had Japan. Um, 음, you had people. 중국, we even had. 
mm. uh, Turkey down here, we have Westerners, um, uh, China, mm. just all the countries. 많은 나라에서 왔습니다. 전 세계 처음으로 전 세계 국뽕, 그냥 양궁이 아니고 국뽕으로 yeah. 모였습니다. Um, now I'll just pause on this one. This fellow here, his name is Yak Kopadryer. Uh, he's a very good friend of mine, and originally he's from the Netherlands. And his specialty is making the Japanese yumi pao. And if you saw the movie The Last Samurai, all of those bowls were made by my friend. And so he, he was demonstrating at the festival how he makes the bowls. Um, and this one was for, we have uh, Yu Se Hyun, and over here, Yu Youngi. He is the father of Yu Se Hyun. They, both of them, they have a uh, um, uh, bow and arrow museum up in Paju. So they're the holders of that. All of, all of them, all of them are uh, the intangible cultural assets here in Korea. Um, then this was the last part of, of that festival. Um, also, that same year of that festival, I wrote my first book about Korean traditional art. Together with my son, we did it together. And, and he got him. He was my cover, my, my cover model. Um, so, today and into the future, last year I released a, a new edition of my book. 작년에 두 사람은 이제 또 활쏘기에 대한 책을 편찬했는데 so I wrote this one and my son he wrote it his own book on Korean tradition. 아, 저 아들도 어, 자기의 책을 편찬했습니다. 아들은 한국 외대 교수로 있습니다. Uh, and also the Korean bows they became very popular around the world and so there are actually many western bowyers who are making their own Korean bows like uh, this fellow, Jason Beaver, Bjorn Sulfite, uh, and also Francesco Alessi. And these are just a few. There are actually many, many others. These, these guys are actually friends of mine. And they they are showing, especially Joseon Dynasty style archery, the military yeah, style. Uh, yeah, he, he put it up on Facebook. <laughs> and then also, there, are, there are, are also Koreans who are also promoting around the world. For instance, Kim Young Sup is promoting world horseback archery. Kim Young Sup is promoting world horseback archery. 마상 무예로 활을 쏘고 하는 글도 알리시는 분이고 김헌구라는 분은 캘리포니아에서 대한정을 만드시고 널리 알리시는 분이고 And he's very active teaching people in America how to shoot Korean style. 미국에서 한국 스타일 활을 쏘는 걸 많이 가르치신다고 합니다. And we're to finish up here with just a couple of things. Right here in Daegu, we have Four jungs that I know of. So the Gwandak jung, which is in uh, Namgu. Palmung jung, which is uh, right here at Susangu. And then a couple I didn't have photographs for, but uh, Dakgu jung is in Nongu, and Hansan jung is in Dalsagu. So, and total in Korea, as, as of now, are 394 clubs around the country. When, when, I, when I first started in Korean archery, it was, it was fewer than 300. So, 
So it's, it's growing all the time. Thank you very much. Thank you.